What does this medal mean? Does it say anything about the man who won it? Or is it only capable of speech when it is pinned to a uniform? It has no pulse. It lacks a voice. Yet, it has a story to tell. Listen. So, you know, I, I often wonder to myself, uh, why did Conoval kill that man? summer day, among the first since the Great War, Philip Conoval, with a single thrust of a knife, kills a man. Calm and restrained, Conoval tells the police, I've killed 52 of them. This makes 53. So this is a little booklet that we published about Philip Conoval. It's actually the second edition. On this side, you actually see um, the bas relief that we placed at his home village in Kutkyuchi in Ukraine. Philip Conoval was an immigrant who came to Canada in 1913. He left a small village called Kutkyuchi, uh, which is in central Ukraine. So like many other Ukrainians, uh, he immigrated to Canada in the expectation that he'd be able to earn some money and either send it back home or eventually bring his wife and child here, or more likely than not, just earn enough to be able to buy land and improve his lot in life in Ukraine, then under Russian occupation, and um, build himself a better life there. He did it. He killed him. Conoval killed him. Conoval is felling trees in the Ottawa Valley when war is declared. He enlists in the Canadian Expeditionary Force. He's back in the world he had just left. He survives the Battle of the Somme with 60,000 casualties in the first hour. He survives the battle at Vimy Ridge with 10,000 Canadian casualties in six days. Um, when, of course, he got to the front, he found the same conditions that so many hundreds of thousands of other Canadians found. Horrific uh, trench warfare, uh, extreme loss of life, uh, all the traumas affected with the, 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 the war that we know the First World War turned out to be. And now, this is Lens, France, known as Hill 70, an entirely Canadian battle. This is urban warfare. It's even worse than trenches, because you're in the dark, you're in the dust, there's screaming, there's fighting, there are bombs going off, there are people dying, there are people bleeding all over the place. You're moving from cellar to cellar in the dark, in the dust, in the noise, with a knife. You're jumping into trench hole, trenches and into, and, and into craters, and you're encountering four or five men who are probably just as scared as you are and are just as pumped as you are, and you're butchering them with a knife, with a bayonet. Can't get more close and personal than that. The official citation reads, Conoval killed 16 enemy troops in two days of fighting and single-handedly captured two significant German positions under extreme conditions. Conoval lifts his head above the trench. A sniper fires. Conoval receives gunshot wounds through his face and neck. Evacuated to London, his wounds heal. 
His gallantry is rewarded with the Victoria Cross. And the king himself pinned it on him and said, you are one of the most valiant, you know, brave men in my army. So Cunival was distinguished by the king himself. We do have a reference to him sort of standing in front of Buckingham Palace, not knowing what to do. No one even bought him a beer until his fellow soldiers saw him and said, wow, let's go have a pint. He killed him. Cunival killed him. Uh, so this Ukrainian immigrant arrives in Canada looking for a better life, serves the country and the British Empire with distinction, wins the Victoria Cross, is feted by His Majesty, um, has a remarkable uh, story to his life. I mean, it's, it's, it's the great Canadian story, in a way. He ends up in Ottawa in 1919. The local hero, Corporal Philip Conoval, leads the first peace parade. There's the story that he was, his friend was involved in some kind of altercation. Cunaval chased the assailant back to his home. That Cunaval had a knife in his hand that he, he ran it through the door into the man's heart, uh, killing him instantly. Cunaval says, I've killed 52 of them. This makes 53. What's one more? He didn't try to get away, and he could have. Um, he didn't deny it. He seems to have been quite at peace with himself in terms of what he did. Conoval would later tell the court, I'm sorry he is dead, but I'm glad I'm alive. In April of 1921, Philip Conoval is found not guilty in the murder of William Arctic by reason of insanity. Carnival killed him. We do know that he spent several years in an asylum. When they finally did release him in 28, nobody cared about him. You know, a homeless person. He ended up on the streets of Ottawa. And one day, you know, his, one of his former officers sees him in this condition and finds him work on Parliament Hill. And so there he is, he's a janitor on Parliament Hill. A janitor with the crimson ribbon of the Victoria Cross. Intrigued, Prime Minister King asks, Who are you? By order of the Prime Minister, Conoval becomes the messenger and special custodian of the Prime Minister's office. So Conoval moves up, as it were, and remains in that position essentially until the day he dies. When I reflect on Conoval's life and the meaning of the Victoria Cross, um, he deserved it. There's no doubt of that. It's all the other stuff he didn't deserve. Shit happens, as, as, as people say. And so it did in Cunaval's life. But he triumphed. He kept getting back up. Right? He didn't say, oh, poor me. I've had half my face shot off. The rest of it is a story of a simple man. Whether it was mopping up in Parliament or mopping up the trenches. A man who didn't say, uh, I'm owed something. Never. He was modest to the day he died and modestly buried, almost forgotten, now recovered. Amen to that. <laughs>